Sometimes I stare longingly into the mirror, wondering, is Death Stranding the Dark Souls of hiking games? <gasps> Nobody knows! Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Let's Play Death Stranding. In the last episode, we did nothing. In this episode, it might still be the same. Let's go upstairs, my dude. Oh, never mind, I take it back. Well, have you had a chance to think it over? Chalk full of Chirelium, but safe for you dooms guys to wear. That's all you'll need to go forth and reconnect the world. To make us whole again. I'm a porter. I don't care about connecting anything. Or making knots. But I'll do what I have to. To help Amelie out. Listen up, Sam. The terminals Amelie's people built in the towns and cities they passed through on their journey west are called knots. The infrastructure's there, but the Cairo network is offline. Right now, it's only capable of transmitting voice communications, sometimes wired, sometimes wireless, and a small amount of data. So, unless the necessary data stored on site, our chirograms won't show up. Emily and the other Bridges members you've seen around the place are grams generated with local data. In case you didn't know. Anyway, all you've got to do is find the knot, connect your cupid, and bring Cairo communications online. Once you connect it to the terminal, you'll be able to initiate zero-time massive data transmission with the UCA network. And just like that, you'll reconnect us not only to each other, but to our past. All the lost and fragmented junk data will be compiled and restored. Like bringing a dinosaur back to life from a fossil. Four point six billion years of history on Earth. All the wisdom and knowledge we lost since the Death Stranding will be ours again. And that, my friend, is how we'll beat this thing. Once you establish Cairo communications, generating grams won't be an issue. You'll also be able to use Cairo printers. Won't be long before we're able to send all kinds of things through the wire. Except anything original. Or that's got a soul. Nothing real. Just copies. True. Which is why we'll still need porters like you. Before and after we're made whole, we'll need men in the middle. No rest for the wicked, huh? Yeah, well, idle hands and all that. We'll give you the details at the dispatch terminal. Make sure you check it upstairs. Drop's waiting up there, too. These shoes look like they've done some serious miles. Shall I dispose of them? Wait. Hold on. There's something I want you to look into. My blood seemed to set those things off. Happened more than once. Set them off? How do you mean? I don't know. You took my blood, didn't you? You tell me. All right. I'll see what I can do. Hmm.
take care of him. I promise you. Maybe. Maybe. Hold on here. Apparently, Alt is the button to uh, grab onto your your uh, harness here. That's weird. All right. Anyway, well, let's go examine this. Sam, this is Die Hard. Your current objective is to extend the Cairo network from here to Port Knot City. But don't think you can make a beeline straight for it. Signal won't carry that far. To cover the distance, we need to utilize knots. Think of it like tying ropes together to make a longer rope. The first of these knots is a bridge's way station. Go ahead and take a look at the order. Deliver whatever they need and connect the Cupid. Alrighty. So yeah, orders for Sam, and we can also make deliveries. So making deliveries is essentially grabbing lost cargo from other players or from uh, random NPCs. I mean, just make a delivery there. Uh, take on orders. Actually, I might be wrong about this one. Deliver requested cargo. Oh, never mind. Oh yeah, and cargo dropped by others. I was right. I was right. I remember these things. It's only been half a year. Okay. Uh, yeah, we have a private locker here. We can throw whatever we want in here, but this private locker is specifically for capital, not city. The private locker in the next knot will be its own private locker and et cetera, et cetera. You can't teleport items between areas. Even when you get fast travel, you cannot teleport your shit over unless it's like uh, attached to your body, I guess. That's about it. That's really it. Simple as it goes. So let's go listen to the briefing here on uh, capital knot. The last void out in Central Knot City brought deliveries to a standstill. Until now. Your cargo for this run is a batch of smart drugs. Oxytocin, to be precise. Oxytocin is effective at reducing stress, so much so that some folks call it a love or happy hormone. Once you've completed the job, connect the way station to the network using the Cupid. Sounds good. So that's what we were delivering before to Capital Knot City. We delivered four cases of smart drugs that elicit oxytocin. Uh, we're probably going to get an email about oxytocin not too long from now then. Sam, order summaries may contain information critical to your success. Make sure to review them before getting underway. Okay. Uh, let's look over the objectives. So the order details is deliver the item with less than 50% damage. We're not trying to rush it there. We're not trying to speed run. We're just trying to get it there with no damage. Or next to no. So we also get a little bit of detail here. Supplements that provide the brain with oxytocin and, uh, and hormones. Effective at easing symptoms known to arise from having little interpersonal contact, such as stress and a lack of affection for others. And they offer us supplies. This is not purchase supplies. These are just given to us. We get four ladders and one set of anchors, which is three anchors. Uh, I think the upgraded anchors give you more. Some of them. And they potentially last longer or something. All right. Uh, so our most important item should be attached on the safest part of our body. So I like to attach these things to my suit because I feel like it's the right choice. So we put it on our hip. Sam, now we've supplied you with some rope and a ladder for this run. They should help with the steeper inclines and the ladder will also make a halfway decent bridge if you need to cross a river. 
right now I figure you're thinking about how you want to handle this order. Okay. So much like how you would handle a loadout in, say, a first-person shooter or a third-person shooter, right? We're handling a loadout for the terrain that we're going to be going on. There's going to be rivers and there's going to be mountains. Are we going to use the ladders for climbing mountains or are we going to use them for crossing rivers? And we can also keep in mind that not only will we be able to reuse these ladders, they don't disappear after you place them unless you specifically choose to delete them. Um, but these will also be available for other players once we unlock the chiral network uh, and connect our strand with them and enter the stranding system, which is really cool. Um, so let's hang the first supply item on our tool rack. I believe the tool rack is centralized weight. And yes, uh, choosing where your items are located will affect the center of gravity for Sam. Uh, so the rest of the items I'm going to continue attaching to our suit. And since these are free, there's really no harm in taking them all. And the game is smart enough here to actually give us just enough items to keep ourselves relatively balanced. And I also lied about the tool rack being uh, centralized, because clearly he's weighed over to the, white, to the right. So I might actually just end up attaching the, uh, the supplies on our back, which is fine. Uh, anyway, we'll just carry this on our back here for a sec. And again, you don't have to take these things with you. You never have to. Also, we get an extra pair of boots, which is nice. Always appreciate it. We have uh, clips, basically. If, you should be able to carry up to two extra pairs and plus the ones on your feet. All right, so we're just gonna change this around real quick. We're gonna carry this on our back and then we're gonna go to the climbing anchor and then we are going to attach this to our suit. Now, when we use an item in the game, it'll pull it off of the suit and replace whatever is on your tool rack, right? So it really is what it is. It is kind of funny that we just have this massive ladder on our back though, so I think we might just move the ladder over. Where is it? Oh yeah, on tool rack. Yeah, I think we'll just switch these around. Hang on to a rack. There we go. Now we're a little bit more balanced. We're still a little bit off, so we're going to be leaning to the left, or to the right, rather. Um, that's okay. And again, we're going to be spending these ladders like we just don't care. It doesn't matter. We didn't pay for them. But we can damage them by falling over, so we should be relatively careful about our choices. Sam, triple check your loadout, I take it. Well, we can't, we don't have a power printer, I don't think, so we can't even make anything yet. We open our tool HUD, so as you can see here, this is all the tools that we have. We have PP, uh, we have nothing, and our four ladders and our climbing anchors. Very nice stuff. You may be wondering, can we take these vehicles? Nope. We have to unlock vehicles later. Also, why is my mouse hot screen? See that sign someone left over there? You can leave some of your own if you'd like. Messages, warnings, words of encouragement, whatever comes to mind. Again, the like system, pretty useful for seeing more of that player stuff. If you think a certain player made a good decision in dropping down a bridge, give them likes. It helps them out in their playthrough. But this is obviously not a player. This is Nick Easton. I still like giving likes out anyway, though. So one of the cool things is we can use this guy again, this watchtower. I've had this watchtower actually melt down and break, though, over time. In my 200-hour playthrough. No one ever talks about how, like, oh, all the players are helping each other. But, like, at some point, everything's just going to collapse. And then you're going to have to start over. <laughs> and it's sad. Uh, anyway, though. Look at this. We got Capital Not City loot. Literally, this is stuff that you would grab and then bring immediately right back to you. But it's not necessary, so we're not going to pick it up. It really isn't anything of interest, though. Really, you just want to get to the way station. It doesn't even have a name. It's just called Way Station West of the Capital Knot, which is kind of funny to me. Yeah, really, just nothing here. Honestly. Okay. I'm gonna remove these markers. Oh, I guess we. Hmm. Hold on. Hmm. 
It's been a while. Let me see if I can remove these markers entirely. There we go. Okay, so we have two choices on how we want to get to our next zone. And the thing is, if we want to future-proof, we need to go the wide berthing area because, really, it's only good enough to go through this cliff once as a human being. As a real Neil Breen, the only reason you would go over the mountain is because you're feeling a bit lazy. But if we go through PT territory, each thing territory, this is going to open up a whole wide area of opportunity for us because then we can actually make a trail for bikes and potentially trucks, mostly bikes though, and potentially get some bridges going on unless the player base has already made bridges. I mean, the game's not even been out for 24 hours, but I can only imagine people have made bridges at this point because they're crazy. Anyway. So, first things first, I think we just take the trail. And as you can see, it's a small trail, but as we use it more, it'll become larger and larger. Sam, even the best porters have been known to lose their cargo. But you're better than the best. You've got what it takes to finish what they started. If you come across any abandoned shipments, Consider taking them to their intended destination. It's easier than you might think. See, all our packages are tagged with Bridges IDs for easy tracking. And your Ojo deck is equipped with a scanner which might detect said IDs. Which is a roundabout way of saying that that thing on your shoulder can help you locate mislaid shipments. So, as we can see here, we're talking about these pieces of loot. Remember, Sam. Every parcel is a promise made to a person in need. And they're counting on you to deliver. So a lot of people make the mistake of just grabbing these and then moving on to the west of Knot City area. I feel like it's not necessary. The likes that you get are rather minimal, and I'd rather pick them up on the way back. Or if they get permanently destroyed, they get permanently destroyed. That's totally fine. Usually if you get too far away from lost loot, that is what happens. We can scan the river and see how dangerous it is to go through. As we can see, it's only yellow. And I think that we'll be okay. Now we gotta remember, Sam does not have any exoskeletons on him, so he's gonna have a little bit more difficult of a time. May also notice that BB does not like any of this shit. Anything that has to do with water, BB hates it. He will freak his shit. Or their shit, in this case, I don't know. Uh, everything here is just capital, not city. Again, I just don't feel it's worth it. Unless... Uh, they do give us the... Private locker. Is that what they want us to do? Just throw it all in the private locker? Okay, I see. So you pick it up. You walk on over to a private locker. Right? Say you're not headed that way. And in this case, we would... Activate the terminal. And we would make a delivery... Good work, Sam. I see you brought in some lost cargo. Feel free to submit it here for processing. If you come across any more while out on a run and don't think you can carry it to its destination, you can always put it in storage. It'll be safe and secure until another porter comes along to finish the job. Even if it has to pass through a dozen more hands before it arrives, you can rest easy knowing you did your part. So essentially, you get a partial reward. And uh, someone else will get a full reward or even a bonus reward. Essentially, how it works is you get a multiplayer, uh, multiplier. Excuse me. Uh, the more hands it touches, the last person that hands it in gets the biggest boost in likes. Right. So the next person that hands us in is going to get the forty likes, plus whatever the bonus is, which is really cool. Uh, so yeah, we'll just entrust this. It automatically goes to entrust store. You can select them to not entrust them here. Yeah, there you go. 
there you have it. It doesn't really do anything for you. Other than gives you a few extra likes if you really, really, really need it. And again, it's kind of nice to share between other players. And as you can see, we got even more Capital Not City items. Perhaps on the way back, we'll pick them up. But on the way to where we're going, they always forget the name. I'm just going to keep calling it the... Oh, it's the Way Station. That's right. The Way Station. We'll keep doing that. All right, we haven't had to use the ladder yet. And again, you don't actually even need to use ladders. I could do this whole thing just walking all the way through. But I'm trying to see if there's any good spots for a ladder, to be fair. Sam, remember that prolonged exposure to tide pole damages cargo containers. Don't stay out in the rain any longer than you have to. I wonder if they've patched this area yet to make it a little bit harder to get through. So you see as the shivers, it means there's BTs in the area. And then shortly, BB is also going to activate. And thankfully, they've now patched it, so this is the only time we'll ever be warned that there are BTs in this area. You will never be warned again. Thank God. This animation was the worst. Being locked out of controlling your character for like a solid minute or ten was like the biggest, shittiest thing ever. So, again, we don't have legs. We don't have anything really going for us, but we're going to continue trying to make some sort of trail here as we go along. Preferably a trail that doesn't go through BTs. And we're about to leave the Cairo network, which will be very dangerous when it comes to needing data and printing things. Okay, we're okay. You don't really need to hold your breath unless it's super spinning anyway. So we're just going to keep going through here. going to pause for a second because it looks like there's a BT right in front of us just hanging out. Oh god. I'm sorry, I keep hitting photo mode. I'm not used to it being in the game. I played before photo mode was a thing. Alright, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to make ladders across these zones if possible. Because these are a little wide. That's the idea, though. We're going to make ladders, and then we just go up here. And straight into the waypoint. A way station. Oh, so just keep on the right here. The speed of which you move, you being crouched or not. You being, you holding your breath or not. It all depends on if they spot you. Alright, looks like we're almost out of here. It's really not that bad of a BT zone. A lot easier than the one that we had to deal with before, because we will be passing through here a lot. Keep it cool. Again, I'm just trying to keep this line going. So we don't have to worry about it as much. And there you go. That's essentially that for that one. So our ladder really isn't that long. I should point this out because you're wondering why I haven't used a ladder yet. Our ladder only goes so far, right? And if it can't make it to the other side, then there's just no reason, right? And you kind of want to set it up on rocks. Maybe. Something like that. Yeah, if it ends up going underwater, not the best. Here, I'll just place it down, though, for experimentation's sake. And there you go. That's actually not too bad. And then you can just get across the water, no problem. And I'll even have my name on it, which is cool. to survive. 
survive, we need to find another way. A way to overcome the BTs, the Death Stranding, the whole damn mess. Perfect. All right, this is exactly what I wanted. So you see these rocks here? We can actually use them as anchor points for our ladder system. And this is probably what a lot of our other players are going to do with these free ladders. But if we're the first, then we can get the more likes. <laughs> That's the idea. Uh, hold on. Okay, so my idea here is actually to put a rope up there. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Let's uh, drop this ladder here then. I'll make one more ladder. This one will be a little bit gratuitous, honestly, because we don't need it, but... The idea will be put this ladder up here. And what we're going to do is we're going to sneak around. Because we don't really care. But maybe this will help other players that are struggling. Now, we're not part of the Kyra network yet. So none of our stuff is helping other players yet. Potentially. But. Maybe it could. So all we got to do is secure our route. Like so. Give it a good amount of ground. So when they crawl up, it's not too big of a deal. And this helps us out in the future, too, if we have to go this way, which we probably will have to. And then we just throw the rope. Just got to make sure I'm angled correctly. Boom. And there you go. Three ladders right there. Leading you straight up onto this hill. And as you climb above it, you can even spot where we need to go and apparently my mouse is on screen again i hope it wasn't on there for too long i do apologize i have no control over it it just for some reason keeps teleporting back into the game and i don't know why and we may notice that we're moving even faster now just because uh we are weighing even less because five kilograms is quite a bit especially times four also sorry bb so, our cargo container is ruined, but that doesn't mean it's damaged in any way. And that's okay. That's why I said, always take your time. Now, here's the thing. The chances of you tripping here is very high because of how many rocks there are. When I tap the R1 button, we want to follow the blue path as best as we can. Because if we don't, we could stumble and run head first straight into a rock. And that's why I'm double strapping right now because I do not want to risk running into anything, especially with my container being broken. Do not want to risk it for any sort of biscuit. No idea if those bigger rocks will be moved out of the way. I sure hope so though. All right, great. I don't want to climb that because, again, we could stumble right into a wall. Verifying ID. Clear. Cargo verified. I just don't want to risk it. That is a safe and secure delivery. And we secured a route back and a route forward. So it'll be faster the next time we go through this. And that's just on foot. We're also trying to prep a trail for ourselves for the future, too. Anyway, here you guys go. So regrettably, I would have liked to grab that extra lost cargo, but it's not the end of the world. Thank you. We've all been feeling the loss of Central Knot City. No one seemed to know what it meant for the organization. Or the UCA. Or us. The oxytocin will take the edge off, and that'll be a big help. Won't be long before we're back on track. We may have a look. <laughs> this is great. Thank you again. Yeah, everything looks to be in good order. And soon our way station will be too, I hope. Should say 0%. Should be an easy S rank. The more S ranks, the better. We want S ranks on all the things. We need S rank like everything in the game to get like certain achievements. 
All right, and there you go. And again, we're really just going to get miscellaneous and cargo condition. Because the quest was focusing on cargo condition, that's why we get bonuses. It has to be related to the quest, I think. There you go. Total playtime, exactly 10 minutes for that. Well, we're four hours in. Oh, I guess I've been AFKing a bit. You're with the second team, right? Where are the others? Dead. Caught in the void out. No way. That one blast got them all? And what, they just sent you out on your own? I mean, if it was just a delivery, that'd be one thing. Porters come through from time to time, but... The second team was meant to bring the Cupid. They were gonna connect us up. Three years we've been waiting for help. Three years! And they sent us one guy who... Shit, shit, shit! Tell me you brought more than the Oxy, at least. I've got the Cupid. You... Really? So it's true. They finally got it working. Well, then you just might be the answer to my prayers. So, what are you waiting for? We could get put us on the goddamn grid? New day for the UCA achievement, hell yeah. All right, new strand established. The way station west of Capital Not City has joined the UCA, which has allowed us to create post boxes. Cool, our first structure. Uh, we can also fabricate equipment and make deliveries. You share lockers, donate weapons and equipment, as well as share locker, withdraw cargo, which what we did is we put the cargo in and now we can take the cargo back out. It wouldn't be our cargo though, it'd be someone else's. This area is now connected to the chiral network, enabling you to see and access other players' structures. Connection to capital, not city, confirmed. It's really happening. <laughs> Just like Amelie promised. We can finally do what we came here to do. Hey, you're headed west, right? Gonna be a lot of people happy to see you. Guess you'll keep on until you hit the coast, huh? Which means you'll get to see Amelie in person. Oh, that's something. That is really something. I... Me, I've never met her. Only seen her hollow messages back when I was with the first expedition. Well, anyway, you best be careful on the road. There's some bad people out there. More than good, some say. <laughs> but I don't need to tell you that. Thank you, Sam. By bringing that way station into the Cairo network, you've put it in direct contact with those of us back here in Capital Knot City. Right. What's next? West of the way station are a couple of structures our previous expedition put in place. And beyond them is your next destination, Port Knot City. It's on the shore of a crater lake that formed after the first void out. Your objective is to link up Port and Capital Knot. But to do that, you'll need to utilize our facilities as additional waypoints. They'll be essential for establishing a stable connection. Given the distance we need to cover, we're looking at using a distribution center and a power station. As to which you should head for first, start with the distro center. We've got some cargo that needs delivering anyway. Check the nearby delivery terminal to pick it up. Good work. New order available. Please access delivery terminal for further information. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for this episode, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for watching. It's been an absolute blast. And we're finally starting to get into the meat and potatoes, meat and potatoes of Death Stranding. Uh, and sooner, rather than later, actually, we're going to be just going all in on gameplay here, which is going to be awesome. Because uh, doing these deliveries is so addicting. I just like... It's one of my favorite gameplay loops of any game. Just uh, trying to figure out a route and future-proof it for not only myself, but other players that may need help as well. Um, so yeah, we'll talk about more of that stuff in the next episode, and I'll see you guys next time.